I'd say the city of Seattle is at a, in a corner of the country. It's out of the way, and yet it has location advantages, a good location both for military and defense purposes, but also we have the history of Boeing and, and then the accidental history of Microsoft and, and other such things. And this led to unusually fast growth, about twice the national rate. So that's sort of the big underlying story. If we wanted to start in the earliest period, 1940, we were a reasonable regional metropolis, about a half a million people in the greater area, a little bit more, uh, quite concentrated in the city of Seattle and, and Tacoma and Everett. During the war, the migration was quite high because of the shipyards and aircraft industries and military operations. And this brought in lots of migrants from the upper Midwest, Minnesota, Dakotas, Montana, and so on. But also the beginning of a sizable migration of blacks from Texas and Louisiana. And they came part, partly because of the connection of Boeing plants in uh, Louisiana. 50s and 60s was the era of the baby boom. People had large families, three or four children. Um, both this, in the city had the, the largest population actually had ever had uh, up in, in about 1965, but it also saw the very beginnings by 1960 of suburbanization of Bellevue, and this was the effect of the I-90 bridge. Similarly, the growth, the invention of the interstate, which took place largely in the late 60s, still during the baby boom, facilitated the rapid growth north in Snohomish County. But by 1970, the baby boom had slowed and we had a retreat in the size of families as demographers think that the development of contraception and led to people voluntarily reducing the, the size of their families. If you look between 1970 and 1980, uh, one of the things that happened was a very rapid suburbanization and actually a sort of a decline in the, in the growth of the city itself. And this was partly because this was the heyday of suburbanization and the families wanted to have big homes in the suburbs. But it was also the time of mandatory busing and therefore led to white flight, which made even more people want to move out of, out of the city. By the 1980s, uh, things began to turn around. One big factor was the economy started restructuring away from manufacturing to services and finance. And this led to a rapid growth of downtown Seattle. This meant that lots of young professionals started wanting to live close into the center, either to the, for the university or to downtown jobs. And this continued right up until the present. But it was interesting that despite the growth management and this process of gentrification, the actual majority of growth still took place in the outer suburbs. That has never stopped, even till 2010. So, if I were predicting 2040, we are, I should not be around any longer, but uh, we would expect some, some faster growth in, in existing cities like Enumclaw and North Bend and Monroe and Granite Falls and things like that just because they're attractive satellite places. Or even spilling over farther into Lewis County to the south or Skagit County to the north. And, uh, those are not necessarily desirable from a commuting point of view, but it will happen, partly because there are lots of people in our society who don't like living in apartments, especially don't like raising children in apartments. This is not Manhattan. And so those folks are gonna go out farther away and, and endure awful commutes, but maybe only for a time, because sometimes the jobs will eventually follow also, because that's happened before.